Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat. Oh Woo! Mutton snapper Let's right there, this. baby. Let's do this. 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 Alright, folks, it is a beautiful morning. We're rigging up, we're heading towards the inlet. So the idea for today is we're gonna head out to the deep ledge of the reef and we're gonna do some planer trolling. We're gonna see if we can show you the easiest way I know how to catch king mackerel. And hopefully with any luck, we'll be bringing home some food to the family. Before we get into this stuff, if you wanna learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. All right, like I said, folks, it's a beautiful morning. We got a slight south southeast breeze maybe two three knots not even just had some storms pass earlier some thunderstorms some rainstorms hopefully that stirred up some of that sediment and that'll get uh the fish to nibble and the predators to come in and eat them and you know what that means we'll see you out on the water Folks, so we headed out of Boca this morning. Got uh, no breeze, but we got some turbulent seas. Imagine that. It's a solid two to three. The period in between the waves is kind of close. It's about a three second period, which makes it kind of choppy. You got to understand that when you're reading your forecast, it helps you determine whether or not, uh, you know, the boating conditions are, you know, acceptable for what you like to fish in. All right, so like I said, we're going to start out by doing some planer trolling. And the intention is to show you the easiest way that I know of how to catch kingfish over the deep ledges of the first and second reef. Currently sitting in right around 112 to 114 feet of water. For our planer trolling setup, we got this. This is a Penn International 30 spooled with 80 pound braid. And then on that braid, we got a 300 pound swivel. We're gonna hook that to a number six planer. And then we've got our leader. Our leader is 100 feet of 60 pound monofilament. My planer end, I got a 300 pound swivel again. I'm gonna hook that through the eye of the plate of the planer, just so that it's set up properly and it functions properly. Just like this, your main line, your lure, fish hits, trips your planer, rises up, and you know you got a fish. And then our lure end of our leader, we got a size seven swivel. And our lure is gonna be white trolling feather. And we are going to tip our white trolling feather with a bonita strip. Our white trolling feather is rigged up with about 16 inches of number four, 40 pound wire leader. And we got two 80 hooks on it. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to line up and measure out our bonita strip. Put in our trailer hook first, always rigging through the meat side first. And puncture our lead hook through and we're good to go set up ready to dunk that bad boy in see if we can get into the bite like i said we're in about 112 feet we're going to dunk the uh, hardware in see if we can get pulling see if we can get into the bite let out your planer simple process you simply just take your lower and you toss it over and you unravel your leader let it unravel all the way all 100 feet of it once it is unraveled and you have your planer, simply dunk your planer in the water, put your rod in free spool. You're good to go. Now the one thing you don't want to do is run out several hundred feet of mainline. You already have out a hundred foot leader. You want to let out about a hundred to 125 feet of mainline. What that does is that will get your planer down far enough so that it can react properly and dive down to the appropriate depth. A number six planer will dive down to about 50 to 60 feet when trolled at six to eight knots. So, once you've let out enough line, you slow your boat down. You keep letting out line. You want your planer to react properly and start diving down, especially if you're using braid, which is sensitive. You're gonna let your line go a little slack. Make sure your planer is diving down. Lock up your reel, 
put the boat in slow forward. You will see your rod bend over. If your rod does not bend over in a parabolic fashion, that means that your planer is not set. You'll need to let out some line and you'll need to start over. Put your click on. And you're gonna tether your rod to your boat. And you're up and your planer is working for you. All right, so we're up and rolling with our planer. We had some seas that are pushing us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head into about 100 feet. We're gonna start curving back out to the deep ledge of the first reef. We're gonna head out to about 150, 180. See if we can get into the fight. Currently right in around 160 feet. Marking some stuff on the bottom, which is good. We've got our planer trolling set up, ready, good to go, set. Again, if you don't see that parabolic bend in that rod, planer's not set, you gotta start over. Again, we're gonna be doing between six and eight knots because we're trolling. Trolling in its essence is the pursuit of actively hunting fish. Don't ever forget that when you're trolling. You don't want to give fish a chance to run up and examine your bait. You want them to act on the impulse to feed and strike immediately. Another thing I want to talk about is finding the spots to fish in. A lot of times when you're trolling, you're not going to mark fish on your fish finder. You have to trust what your GPS is saying. You have to look at your contour lines. And you can also kind of use your fish finder as a guide, but you got to remember fish finder can be false because you're underway. It can read a ledge and make a ledge look steeper than it actually is simply because you're traveling faster over it. So if I'm using my GPS and I want to find a deep ledge of the reef, what I got to do is I got to pay attention to my contour lines. Those are the little lines that, uh, you know, dictate what your ground looks like. Contour lines, when they're spread further apart, means your ground is at less of an incline. Contour lines that are packed more closely together means you have more of an ascent or a descent on the sea bottom what you're going over. So that's the sort of stuff you want to look for when you're way offshore trolling and there's no reef structure to go by. And our planer just drips, so we're going to reel out on in. Like I told you, we're doing that planer trolling today. 
showing you exactly how to put kingfish on a deck. All right, folks, there you have it. Very nice first fish, about a 10 pound kingfish, nice juvenile, gonna be great on the dinner table. Like I said, that's the whole point of today is to show you what I consider to be the easiest way to catch king mackerel, which is planer trolling. And doing it on a great lure like the white trolling feather from No Alibi. And as you can see, he uh, kinked up my wire leader real good. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to re-rig this. It's always best practice if you catch a fish and your wire leader looks like this, go ahead and re-rig it. You don't wanna risk the chance of the next one getting into the bite, having it kink and having it break off. We're back up trolling with a planer after we re-rigged. Got another Bonita strip on, can't complain. Like I said, we're out here trying to show you how easy it is to catch kingfish. The most effective way by planer trolling. So what we figured out, is that the fish aren't hitting out deep and they're not hitting it in shallow like that 90 to 120 range they're hitting it around the 150 to 180 foot range so we dialed in on that uh you know depth zone so what we're going to do is we're going to hang out simply between about a buck 30 and a buck 80 and see if we can continue getting into the bite That's why you keep that boat forward. Pull that fish towards you. There we go. I see him out on top, man. He's a good fish. Let's see what we got once we get him up to the boat. They're dragging him. Dragging him real good. Folks, so that was some good old fashioned fishing fun we've had going on. Headed out wanting to show you what I consider to be the easiest way to catch king mackerel. Planer trolling, which is what I consider to be the easiest way to get into the bite with them. We were using this lure, which is also one of the go-to lures that I use when I'm fishing for king mackerel. It's the two ounce white trolling feather. 
These lures are great. I get them from the website AFW, which is American Fishing Wire. They run about three and a half bucks each. I can't complain for that price, you know. I buy five of them at one time. So before we close out this episode, what I want to do is I want to take you back to the garage, show you how to rig up this lure so that you can use it and get into the bite. Okay, to do this version properly, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need your white trolling feather. 80 tandem hook setup between 12 and 18 inches of wire leader. This particular wire leader is number four 40 pound test from the company Malin. And a haywire twist tool if you'd like to use one, which I do. So the first thing I wanna explain is typically I would put on my hooks first, but in case you can't tell, there's really no way it's very difficult to find uh, where the hold comes out of the back because of all the feathers. So. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna feed the business end of our wire leader through the nose hole of the lure. Gonna get it to come out the back and we're gonna pull on it and leave a little bit hanging out the uh, nose so you don't lose it. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to feed on our hooks. And we're going to feed on the tag end of our wire leader through the solid state of the haywire twist tool. Then we are going to bend it around. I'll take this whole setup and do it like this. That way I'm comfortable. And then we are going to form a loop right by our hooks. Pinch down our loop, being sure not to kink the wire leader. And we are going to start twisting the haywire twist tool until we get about 10 to 15 twists on our wire. Once you've got enough twists and you're good, you release the wire leader and make a 90 degree bend. And then we are going to do barrel wraps. You want to try and get your barrel wraps packed as tightly as you can. That way they sort of fasten you're not real good and secure it down and you're gonna want to again you're gonna want to do about six to eight barrel wraps if they don't look pretty it's not the end of the world you don't have to cut it off you just want to try and make them as best you can and again you don't want to kink the end of your leader where your hooks are attaching all right so we got about six to eight barrel wraps there we're good our hooks are on now to break off this tag end, you simply just bend it back and forth and it will snap off. And it'll give you a nice clean break so that you don't get snagged on the portion where it wraps around and leads right there. You can run your fingers over it and it doesn't cut you. Here's your tag. All right, so now we can just simply pull our hooks up. And again, we're good. We've got the hook hanging just out beyond it. This is great if you're going for toothy critters, you can hook on a strip bait or you can troll it plain and you don't gotta worry about getting cut off. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say, hey, we wanna troll this on a planer or hook it onto a swivel up on top. So what we'll do to do that version of it is we will simply make another haywire twist with just a loop up at the top end of it. So we'll come over here, we're gonna flip our Later around, make sure you're comfortable when you're tying your knots. The worst thing you can ever really do is be uncomfortable and, you know, tie a bad knot simply because you're out of position when you're trying to tie it. Give it again, give it about, you know, 10 to 15 twists. Make sure you've got a good knot going on. You don't want it to slip. Once you've got enough twists, take it. Take your tag, bend your tag at 90 degrees, and again, barrel wraps. Nice. Try to get them as tightly packed as you can. Again, being sure not to kink the little loop up here at the end. All right, once you've got enough barrel wraps going on, six to eight barrel wraps, you're good to go. All you will simply do is you will take that and snap your tag end off again. Just bend it back and forth until it snaps off and you're good to go. You've got a seamless connection right there where you won't get snagged and get cut. 
So there you go, that's your whole lure. All right, folks, and that is how you rig up this lure. And so I can guess you say we accomplished our mission today. We set out to show you the easiest and most effective way to get into the hookup with king mackerel. Nothing ever beats heading out with a plan and getting into the hookup with a target species. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed. And I hope you learned a little bit about what I consider to be the easiest way to get into the bite with king mackerel. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing. Going wherever the cool wind takes us.